Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today's video is going to look a little bit different because uh, I decided I was going to use the whiteboard instead of going with the slides. But the steps are still the same. Uh, in the previous video, we looked at no solution versus infinite solution. I told you, you are not going to see those all that much, but you are going to see them occasionally. The last type of equation that I wanted to show you one that is solvable are proportions. Now, proportions are, to, it's an equation that's set up as a fraction like this, like four thirds equals x over six. Uh, what we're really doing is we're finding equivalent fractions, which is something you guys did all the way back in like fourth and fifth grade, where you found like, one half is equal to five tenths, which is equal to three sixths, which is equal to eight sixteenths. You found all of these different fractions that were equivalent, that equaled each other. Well, we're doing the same thing here, but this time we're doing that with algebra and we're doing that with uh, variables. So it's similar, it's something that you've seen before. It's just you look at it and you're like, I feel like I did this in fourth or fifth grade because in a sense, you really did. But uh, for our purposes, when it comes to seeing a proportion, it will be laid out something like this. You'll, you'll have a fraction on one side and then on the other side, you'll have another fraction that has a variable in it somewhere. There's a couple of different ways that you can do this. I wanna show you the one that I think is the easiest. So the first step to solve a proportion is to cross multiply. Now this only works if you, are, if you have fractions on either side of an equal sign. If I had x over six times uh, three halves, and we ignore this four thirds, when you multiply fractions, you actually multiply straight across. So I would actually multiply x times three and six times two, giving me three x over 12. But when we are solving, I'm gonna erase all this, but when we're solving a proportion, which is two fractions that are separated by an equal sign, we're actually going to cross multiply, meaning I'm gonna multiply the numerator and the denominator of the opposite sides of the fractions. So I have four times six and three times x. So what this is going to look like when I cross multiply, my four thirds equals x over six turns into three x equals 24. And from here, we now have a one-step equation. Sometimes you'll end up with a one-step equation, a two-step equation, whatever. Uh, cross multiply, distribute if necessary, and solve. We don't have to distribute for this particular one, so all I can do is solve. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm gonna divide both sides by three, leaving me with x equals, and then 24 divided by three is, Eight. And if I take this eight and plug that back into my original proportion, I'm left with four thirds equals eight over six. And those are equivalent fractions. Four thirds, eight six, you're saying the same thing. It's really, it reduces, the, both of those would reduce to one and one third. So, Let's do a couple more. Uh, so I have two over 10 equals four over n times n plus five. Now for this one, we're gonna follow those same steps. I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm gonna make my little bubbles here. So I have 10 times four on one side and two times n plus five on the other. So I'm gonna start with 10 times four, which leaves me with 40. But what about this two times n plus five? Well, 
remember when I'm cross multiplying, I'm actually multiplying two by this entire thing. I'm multiplying it by n and by the plus five. So I could either do that right during my cross multiplying or just recognize that I'm multiplying two times n plus five. I'm multiplying this two up here by everything in the de denominator of my opposite fraction. So from here, I follow those steps. I distribute if necessary, and I can. So I have 40, I'll bring down, equals 2 times n, which is 2n, plus 2 times 5 is 10. And from here, I now have a two-step equation, which we have been practicing, which we are very, very good at. So in order to get rid of that 10, remember I'm going to, oops, I have a positive 10. So the opposite of positive 10, negative 10. Subtract 10 from both sides, leaving me with, not even negative. Sorry, I'm trying to do too many things at once. 30, 40 minus 10 is 30, equals 2n. So I have 30 equals 2n. I don't have anything else that I can add or subtract. So then I go to multiply and divide. Divide both sides by 2. And then I'm going to bring my answer over here to the side. n equals 30 divided by 2 is 15. So if I plug this in, so I'm left with 2 over 10 equals 4 over 15 plus 5, which equals 4 over 20. And if I reduce both these, these are both equivalent fractions, 2 over 10, 4 over 20. They both reduce to 1 fifth. So that works out. I'll try one more. y minus 3 over 2 equals 4 fifths. Five. That's supposed to be a 4, not a y over 5. Using the pen is not super easy. Or excuse me, I was right. Equals y over 5. My mistake. I thought that was supposed to be a 4. It's actually supposed to be a y. So I'm going to do the first step, which is, again, to cross multiply. Which leaves me then with... Remember, I'm multiplying this 5 by the entire quantity of y minus 3. So that's 5 times y minus 3 equals 2y. Because I'm multiplying 2 times y. So what's my first step? It's to distribute if necessary. So I'm, I distribute that 5 into the parentheses. So I'm 5 times y is 5y. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15 equals 2y. Now remember our steps for solving an equation that has variables on both sides. This is what we're left with. We're left with an equation that has variables on both sides. So I already have the 2y kind of by itself over here. So I'm going to bring my 5y over so that I can combine all of my variables. So in order to do that, I'm actually starting out. It seems weird to be starting by adding or subtracting a coefficient of variable, but Remember, the goal is to get the variable by itself. So positive 5y, negative 5y, those cancel out. Leave me with negative 15 on one side equals 2y minus 5y. 
Same signs add and keep, different signs subtract. Keep the sign of the bigger number, then you'll be exact. Five is bigger than two, so I know my answer is gonna be, my answer is gonna be negative. So I'm left with negative three y. So I added and subtracted. Now, in order to get this y by itself, I have to divide by negative three leaving me with what? And what? Y is left by itself on one side, negative 15 over negative three, negative divided by a negative, my answer is positive, 15 divided by three is five. And if I put that back in there, five minus three over two equals five over five. Well, what's five minus three? Two over two equals five over five. And then both of these fractions reduce to one. One is equal to one, so that works. So again, I'm gonna have a short, uh, quiz type thing to go along with this but if you need any help i want you to refer back to this video on how to solve proportions before we move on to the final review section all right like always if you have any questions please 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 come and find me otherwise have a wonderful rest of your day and i look forward to hearing from you